Okay, good afternoon. Can I see my screen? Okay, very good. Is there any question from last lecture revision class? Okay, then if there is no, I start solving some tutorial question, which are useful for the exam. This is tutorial sheet number six, the last one. First, I copy paste the question. Question. Please read it for, oh no, sorry, this is not complete. Please read it for one minute. Go to question two and three. Okay, let me have a look at question two and three. Okay, I will go through them. Of this tutorial sheet, yes. But after, first I solve this one or two examples which are more useful to the exam. Then I will go through question two and three and so go to it. Okay, anyway, this is question three. Question two, we can go through it, Michael. What is just calculation of the sake polar moment of inertia? In this year, you're lucky you have everything in the table. You don't need to calculate. But anyway, after these two examples, we can go through them. Okay, question number three. Yes, yes, we go the Okay, first of all is choosing proper coordinate system. Again, it's arbitrary which coordinate system you use. You may say I want to use this coordinate system. You can choose this coordinate system and start solving the problem. But this one takes a little bit, you know, long time and you can easily make a mistake. I prefer go through this coordinate system, for example, the X direct, the Y direction, 
lower here. The x direction will be this one. Or this one, the y direction. You will see this one is much more easier to do the calculation. But anyway, you can follow whatever. But in the example, is state clearly your coordinate system. And if I use this one, then based on right hand rule, this is the positive direction for Z, which is clockwise. And please stop me at any point which is not clear what we are doing. Okay. Then to analyze the rigid body motion, if you remember for translational motion and AG, we use Newton's second law, which can be divided in two parts for in-plane motion or 2D motion. And also, to analyze the rotation of the rigid body, we use this one, sigma m equals y alpha. For the G was this one, but for any arbitrary point, which is not the center of gravity, here this is your G center of gravity. You had IG alpha plus some extra term. But if you remember from the last lecture, the revision session, I said if the point which you take the moment around the, about it be the axis of rotation, I can use the same form as the center of gravity. Do you agree? If you forgot this one, please check the last lecture, the revision session. This is not true for any arbitrary point. Only when the point, the arbitrary point, okay, here it's called A. Only it's true when the point A is the center of rotation. And what was the condition for center of rotation? If you remember from kinematics of rigid body lecture, its velocity is zero. Perfect. Thank you. Okay, why it should be counterclockwise? Michael? Maybe I made a mistake. Because based on right hand rule, if this is my X, this is my Y. Yes, it's going into the plane. It's this one, yes? Pointing into the page. Then I think this one is clockwise, yes? Am I right? Yeah. Okay. Now the rest, if you set your coordinate system and you draw the free body diagram properly, maybe you solve the 75% of the question. The rest is just playing with mathematical formulation, which you need to do practice to manage the time. This is the free body diagram of the rod. Do I have any other force? 
Yeah, there's the, the forces in the the forces in the hinge, the reaction forces. Exactly. And I know I don't know the direction. I just assume some direction. You can assume it. again if the calculated value be positive. Okay. It means the initially assumed direction are correct. If it's negative, it means. So if we, if we're doing out the instance where it's at ninety degrees, shouldn't we draw it? As in, so it's vertical. We, we, we try to solve it for general theta, then we put theta equal to ninety. Okay. Yeah, you can you can draw in ninety degrees. Try to solve in that way to see what's the difference. I suggest to do it. Just draw for ninety degree case. Yes. Start from beginning, just not for any theta. Okay. Now I start to use this set of equations. Translation rotation. Sigma fx equals to max. Do I have any force in x direction? The component of A that is in the component of the hinge force that's in the X direction. Okay, I have a X positive, yes. I have Mg cosine theta, so yes. Equals to M. Can you tell me what's my acceleration? Do you remember from circular motion? This is the center of rotation, yes, instantaneous center of rotation. Um, that's, is the AX, the A is AT tangential, so it's equal to alpha R. Yeah, I have one AT, one AN, yes. And the, magnitude, the magnitude of AT, do you remember what was that? Alpha times R. Alpha times R, R here is? L over two. L over two, perfect. This distance. And the magnitude of AN? Is, um, that's the, uh, that's gonna be. Um, R M omega squared, yes? Yeah. Omega squared, L over two. Yes? Because V over, you know this form, yes? But V itself is R omega, yes? Yeah. Then I can write M omega, sorry, M alpha L2. And I don't know the alpha as well. I just assume in positive direction. Then if the calculated value for alpha be negative, it means my initially assumed direction is right. I just assume alpha is alpha plus K. Then similarly for This example is very useful for your exam. Can you explain how you get AT? Okay, AT, you agree in circular motion, if the velocity is not constant, which we called it non-uniform circular motion in the lecture, we have for each point or particle, we have two acceleration, tangential and Normal. Do you remember that? Okay. And do you remember what was A hat T, A T? If you forgot, I just let, let me copy paste. I think I copy paste in the revision lecture. No, okay. Let me copy paste from the lecture notes. 
in lecture seven. Let's me copy it. This is what we had in lecture seven and we proved it from the scratch. And I told you, if you don't want to go through the proof, that's fine. But you need to be able to use the final relationships. Oh, you found it out. Okay, anyway, I just copy paste to show. This one. This is alpha R, yes. And because in 2D, this is only true for planar motion. 2D, plane motion. So everything in the exam is gonna be in 2D? In this course, everything is in plane motion or plane. Next year you will deal with 3D. That's why I emphasize always this is true for 2D. Because next year you should be Okay, alpha is always perpendicular to the plane of R and V, yes. Then my AT, the magnitude of AT, yes. Is magnitude of alpha, magnitude of R. What's the sign between them if they are perpendicular? 90. 90. Then it goes to alpha R. That's why AT is equal to alpha. Is it clear now? Yeah. But again, it's only true for, because only for this case, alpha is always perpendicular to R. Where is my notes? Okay, and please help me. To write the next one, the Y direction. A Y is positive. Yes. Based on chosen sign convention. Okay, mg sine theta is positive or negative? Look at the sine convention. Negative. Thank you very much. Now a y. A y is this one. Yes, the acceleration in y direction. M. And what's the value? Can you tell me? Yes? Perfect. Please don't feel shy at all, even if you have very, very simple question. We can see I make mistake as well sometimes. Then don't feel, we are here to help each other. And this example is very important for the exam. Feel free to ask any kind of question, even the most simple one. Then here, I have three unknown or four unknown. This is unknown, this is unknown. M, M you mean this one, the moment? You see here, I have four unknown, yes? If you fundamentally and conceptually we discuss in the lecture that if the direction 
of the all applied forces and the rigid body, if you remember, pass through the center of gravity. For example, you have this force F1. Its direction passed through the center of gravity, F2. Then this rigid body doesn't experience any rotation. It's just purely translation. Then this set of equation is enough to explain or analyze the motion of the rigid body. But in general case, unfortunately, unfortunately or fortunately, I don't know, the F, the direction of F is not necessarily passed through the center of rotation. Then this F creates some moments. Then you don't have pre pure translation. Your rigid body experiences some rotation as well. To be able to analyze the rotation, rotation means angular velocity, angular acceleration. And analyze the rotation means calculating angular acceleration and angular. You have to use another set of equations. Yes, always this acceleration is the acceleration which you use in the auton center. It's always the acceleration of center of gravity. And also you can see in this example, for example, now in this example, I didn't write down the sigma m. But here I have one, two, three, four unknowns. Yes, definitely. I need another set of equations to be able to solve it. One of them is M. You can write sigma mg ig alpha. I strongly suggest to try this one to solve the problem. But here, because we have limited time, I go through the quickest way. This one, you can use it and you end up with the same result, but it's maybe more quicker to write the M with respect to A. Then please try to solve the same example with respect to G. You must end up with the same result, but it may take a little bit longer. Okay. Uh, for then the exam, we, can we just go straight to the MP if if we see it? Yes, yes. I usually prefer to write with respect to the axis of rotation. But it's quite arbitrary. You can write with respect to G or any other points. You come up with the same results. So for a ball rolling, like we had in previous examples, is that the... Um, the center of rotation and the center of gravity are the same thing, right? This is here? Yeah, then it, the center of rotation and gravity are the same thing, right? No, no, no. If you have pure roll, this is we discussed in the lecture. If you have pure rolling, it means no slapping, yes. The, here, the friction is enough to keep the velocity zero, yes, of the contact point. Yes? Yeah. Then he, when velocity of one point of this rigid body, which is cylinder zero, it means here is the instantaneous center of rotation. Okay, but in that example, it's probably easier to use mg anyway, because more forces are going through g. Yes, way. in this example, I go usually to, for mg, because it kills the n, mg, you too many forces moment. I need less. It will also take rid of the um, um, the R, won't it? Exactly. R you have here because here you have AT, yes. You have R and we know this center of rotation. AT is equal to R alpha, yes. Is it enough? So if there's pure rolling, then that's um, then that's at equals zero. This at? It's pure. If it's pure rolling, then if there's no if there's no slipping. Pure rolling? No, pure rolling moves. It's like a tire of the car. 
friction is enough and it's it's rotating and translating. Where is so translate? If there's no translation, then it's called pure rotation. Okay, that's pure rotation. For pure rotation, definitely you don't have any translation. Then A T U zero, yes. This is for pure rotation. It means your friction is zero. You use some lubricant or something. So pure pure rolling just means the friction is strong enough so that it can't slide. Exactly. Yes, exactly. Um, we discussed this one in detail, I think, in lecture. Is that how cars work in general? Yes, yes, yes. If you look at the lecture 10, I went through the different examples in detail. In lecture 10 video, you can check it. Okay, what's the difference between MA and MP? Okay, you have this rigid body. Okay, sorry, PI means any arbitrary point. I just, but here I don't have P or A. My bad notation, I apologize. And one is center of gravity, the other is not rotation. Okay. G is always center of gravity. Okay, sigma ma equals, this is vector form. And okay, can you help me? Sigma ma equals two. What's the moment of ax with respect to point A? Perfect, and moment is a vector, we know, zero vector. The moment of ay is zero as well. Okay, what's the moment of mg? mg cos theta times why is zero? L over two. Okay, there is a question, why is zero? Which one is why is zero? Which one? Michael. Michael, which one do you mean? They are constant, no. What's the distance? Because moment is defined, distance, cross product force. Yes, distance from the point that you take the rotation with respect to it. Okay. Yes, R is zero. Usually, if the direction of your force pass through the, set, the point that you take the moment about it, its moment is zero. Because it's more precisely, its perpendicular distance from point A is zero. That's good. Then MG. MG has two components. One is MG sine theta. What's the moment of this one? You can see. It passes through the center of rotation. It means it's perpendicular distance from point A is zero, perfect. And one is mg cosine theta. Its perpendicular distance is L over T. mg cosine theta. What is direction? Is plus k hat or minus k hat? We said clockwise was positive, right? Yes. And this is anti-clockwise, so it's minus k hat. MG is anti-clockwise? No, so MG is clockwise, so it's plus k hat. Exactly. Plus. Equals to I alpha, I A alpha. And alpha, as I said here, we assume it's positive. Then if you calculate at the end alpha being negative, it means we need to reverse the direction. For, for timing, we can just assume it's positive. Okay. Now, if I dot product both side by k hat, it would be mg 
cosine theta. Then mg cosine theta equals i a alpha. Now, I rewrite the equation I have. One, two, L over two, what do you mean? Is it mg over? Yes, yes, L over two, sorry, I thought that was. Thank you very much, thank you very much. Thank you. I forgot this distance, you know. R, F. I just put F, I forgot. Is it okay now? Thank you. One equation, one equation, two equation, three. Rewrite again. AX, MG cosine theta, M alpha L over T, AY minus MG sine theta, L over T. And the last one, which comes from rotation, is L over T. Mg cosine theta i a alpha. One unknown, one unknown, one unknown. I have three equations and four unknowns. I need another equation to be able, till now we have three equations, four unknowns. So why is alpha unknown if we've got the value for IA? Uh, but in general, it's unknown. Then you use this equation to calculate it. Yes? Uh, okay, so you're saying before we've, before we've plugged exactly. in IA. Exactly, yeah, yeah, yes, exactly. Okay, you, are, you can, if you want to follow you, you replace alpha, then you have two equations, three unknowns. But still, we need another equation. Yes? That equation, do you remember this one from the lecture? Equals to alpha d theta. Do you remember this? It was from kinematics of rigid body lecture. Do you remember? We said omega equals to this is the definition of omega, yes? If you forgot, I just recap for you. And alpha, the definition of alpha, the omega over t. Do you agree these are just definition? Yeah. Thank you, then dt. This is what we discussed in the lecture. You don't need to know the proof. You need just to use this relationship. And the good news in this, your exam, the magnitude of omega is given. You don't need this relation. But anyway, I just go through it to solve this example in general. So for example, we'll just need the three equations above because omega will be given. Yes, yes, yes. But I solve it here to complete the solution of this tutorial. Oh my God, that specific instant is given, yes. But if it's not given, it's easy. I will show you how to use this one. Then I replace this one for, if I remember, dt, yes. Then alpha equals to d omega, d theta over omega, this one gives Alpha d theta omega d omega, which is this. Yes? This is what we did in the lecture. 
Do you agree? Yes, no. Thank you. Now I have enough number of equations. I have now one, two, three, four equation and four unknowns. I'm able to solve this. And IA. IA, you can calculate IA or you want I calculate it for you. Or you have tables this year, this is. It's one over three and are you happy with this one? And I think I, I saw this one I calculated in one example in the lecture as well. Then therefore from this one, Alpha is three, and this L would be L, this would be three G over two L cosine theta. Yes, am I right? Is it correct? Yes. Now, I replace this one. There is no unique approach to solve it, but one approach is this. I replace this one for alpha here and take integration omega t omega, omega naught to omega. 3g over 2l d theta theta not it. I need this to initial. Initial first is at rest. It means omega not is equal to. zero and theta not equals to zero. It means its initial position is the horizontal position. Then this is zero, this is zero. Yes, you're right, I forgot to sign theta. Thank you very much. Now, And the question asks to calculate it at which angle? Angle 90, yes. Write down an expression for this, which already we did. It's omega d omega equals to alpha d theta. This is what I did here for you. Write an expression for, write down for motion of rod, which are these two, and in detail are these one, two, and the third one is here, three. And the last one is calculation reaction force with theta equals to 90 degree, vertical position, 90 degree. Then this integration would be, 
three g over two l minus sine theta between zero and ninety is equal to l. Is it correct? No, this is plus sign. Yes, do you agree? And this side is one over two omega squared. Therefore, omega squared is equal to three g over L. Because these two and these two will cancel each other. No, I think I have everything. Yes. This is equation one. This is equation two. This is a star. If you replace a star in equation two, this one, Ay is equal to mg sine theta plus m omega to L2. You replace it here, then it gives you Ay equals to mg sine theta plus 3mg over 2. I want a y at angle theta equal to 90, then a y 90 degree equals to mg plus 3 mg over 2, it's 5 mg over 2. This is the first one. For a x, Replace alpha, we have alpha, yes, here. Yeah, this is alpha. We replace alpha equal into equation number one. Replace alpha equals two. Three, what was alpha? Three, three. Uh, Equation number one. Ax equals two. M alpha L over two minus Mg cosine theta. equals to m 3g over all two cosine theta l over two minus mg cosine theta. At theta equals to nine degree, sorry, ninety degree. A x ninety degree equals to the first bit zero. Second bit to zero. Zero. But please, if the question asks to calculate the reaction force, this is not the final answer. Because till now you just calculated the components of reaction force. You may lose mark if you leave it like this. Reaction force is A, AX I hat plus AYG. This is the final answer, 5MG. This is the total reaction force at theta equal to 90. 
No, one of the students at the beginning said why you solve it for general theta. No, I suggest you try to solve it for the position that theta is equal to 90 and check whether you come up with this result or not. If you don't have time, just try it if you face any difficulty, come to Monday drop-in session. Any question? No? How long do we get for the two hours you have? for solution one hour for uploading. Now we can look at question two. Okay, question two, you don't need for the exam because you have all the values this year. But I copy paste question two. Okay, Michael, can we put the question two for dropping session? You come to Monday dropping session, yes? Thank you. Format as the past exam paper we have access. Uh, okay, I talk, please check the video of the last lecture, revisions like session. I just uploaded it one hour ago. I went through the structure of this year exam in detail. Where, where can we access that, sir? On the blackboard. The revision session, like video. The reaction force are always parallel to the plate and perpendicular to it. One of them. Okay, very good question. Very, very, very good question. We said this and this. No, you can't say this is AX. I said at the beginning, you can choose your coordinate system like this. And try to solve it. But here you have more, you know, calculation because you have these things. But no, you can't follow this coordinate system. It's exactly the same. Could I answer your question? I strongly suggest to solve the same example using these coordinates. You must end up, if you face any difficulty, come to my data. Okay, Yusuf and Shalem, are you now in the, in the room? Yes, yes I'm here. Okay, I'm a little bit sick today because I went to London yesterday. Can I answer your question from last dropping session on Monday? Can you attend on Monday dropping session? I can't come Monday because I have a religious holiday, so I can't use the computer on Monday. Okay. Do you have a Skype? Me? Yes. No. What about the Sunday? Sunday you cannot? Sunday I can Sunday I can do, yeah. Email me, then I will I will go through it by a Skype meeting in half an hour. Can you email oh, me? Skype. Um, so okay, on, 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 on Sunday you're talking about? Yes, I will send you a Zoom link, that's fine. Okay, can yeah, you can send me a Zoom link on for, sun, for Sunday. I really do apologize because I feel sick a little bit today. That's, that's okay, I feel better, sir. Yes, yes, but don't worry, that one is not related to the exam, but I, because I promise you, I, I have to go through. And Yusuf, can you do it on, Monday, that's perfect. Monday is better because discussion board, the student may find it difficult. I don't want to put a discussion board. 
If you can attend the Monday, if you couldn't, just send me an email. I arrange a private session half an hour with you as well. Thank you for your attention. Anything else come to Monday dropping session and please check the revision session lecture video I uploaded on Blackboard. You can see the structure, the details you need to revise. All the best. Thanks for attention and see you later. Bye. Thank you, sir. No problem.